We're in a brand new unit, unit four, and this is all about geometry. This is triangles and parallelograms, and of course, there's links in the description to help you. You'll be given a paper with algebraic and geometric formulas to use with the GED math test. So you don't need to memorize them, but you do need to know how to use them. A triangle is a polygon with three sides and three angles, three interior angles. They usually use a little curve mark inside the angle to show that that's the angle they're talking about. And a quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides and four interior angles. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral whose opposite sides are parallel and congruent. And see how it's slanting? So it's just like the quadrilateral, except it's leaning, isn't it? So this green side is parallel to that green side, and that purple side is parallel to that purple side. See? Two parallel lines will never meet. They'll run side by side, but they'll never touch each other. And congruent means equivalent or equal. Sides can have congruent length. Angles can have congruent measure. And one polygon can be congruent to another polygon. And when you see for the angles, the interior angles, if you see the little curve mark like that inside the angle and you see a little line through it, those are called tick marks. And they show congruency. That means this interior angle is congruent to that interior angle. That means they have the same measure. If you see sides with the tick marks on them, that means this side length is the same as that side length. When you see two tick marks, it tells you which ones are congruent to each other. This has got one tick mark, so it's congruent to that side. This one's got two, so it's congruent to that side. Some polygons could have three tick marks or four tick marks. It depends on how many sides the polygon has. And we learned in video 15a that perimeter is distance around a figure, like a fence around a yard. We can find the perimeter of a figure or a shape by finding the sum of all its side lengths. So you would just take the side length plus the side length plus the side length plus the side length, and that would give you the perimeter. Area is the surface measure of a two-dimensional shape. It's the inside. And the area of a parallelogram is found by multiplying base times height. It's similar to length times width, but it's different because it's leaning. We can use any side as a base. It doesn't have to be the bottom. The height must go straight and make a 90 degree angle with the base. See? It's going to make a perpendicular line. So that would be the height, that would be the base. So for this parallelogram, it says the height is 3 inches and the base is 5 inches. Look, its slant height is 3.25. A slanted line will end up being longer than the height. See? A slanted side length. We can use the formula A equals BH. It means area equals base times height to find the area of a parallelogram. So we make a perpendicular line here, see? And we do the base times the height. We would do 5 times 3. That would give us 15 inches squared. We've got a little 2 exponent here that's telling us it's 2 measures, base and height. Or we could say it's 15 square inches. Now, the perimeter would be different. It would be 5 inches plus 5 inches plus 3.25 plus 3.25. We can also look at it as 2 times 5 plus 2 times 3.25. Do our multiplication and our addition, and we get 16.5 inches for the perimeter going around. If that was a yard, that would be the fence, see? But the area is the inside, okay? And that would be squared, like there's little squares in here that we're counting, okay? So keep in mind that if you ever see this little box, it's telling you it's a 90-degree angle. And we can find the area of a triangle by using the formula A equals half BH. It means the area equals half the base times the height, or you can look at it as half times base times height. Here we have a height of 5 inches and a base of 4 inches. We do area equals half 4 times 5. 4 times 5 is 20, so half times 20 is 10. So the area inside this triangle would be 10 inches squared or 10 square inches. Either way is correct. And see how we ignored the slant height here? That would be okay for perimeter. The perimeter would be 2 times 5.5 plus that 4. That would give us 15 inches for the sum of all the sides. 
And the area formula is half base height for a triangle because a triangle is half a parallelogram. Just remember to use a 0.5 on the calculator for that half, okay? Any side can be a base. The height goes straight and makes a 90 degree angle with the base. So we see our little 90 degree angle box, see that? As long as it's T-shaped, perpendicular lines. So here the base would be at the top and then it's going down like this, see? To make a 90 degree angle here. We could have it on this side going that way with the height. Here we could have the base and then the height. If there are two sides making a 90 degree angle, we could use them as the height and the base. See? Here the top is being used as the base and then here's the height. Here we have the base and the height. Here we have the base up here and then the height coming down. All right? As long as it's making a T-shape, a perpendicular line with the 90 degree angle, we can use it. Okay? And what is the area of the shaded section? Well, the area of the whole thing would be 4 times 6, but we're only doing the shaded section. So we could do 4 times 6 is 24 and divide it by 2 to get 12 centimeters squared or 12 square centimeters. Or we could use the triangle formula and do half times 4 times 6. Half times 24 or 12 inches squared or 12 square inches. And it doesn't matter what shape the triangle is, because if we laid an identical congruent triangle next to it, it would make a parallelogram. So it's half of that parallelogram, see? So it's half base times height. What is the area of the shaded section for this one? Now we have half of a triangle. But if you look here, the shaded section says that this whole base is six inches. So for the shaded section, of the triangle, if the whole thing is six, then the shaded part is three. So we could do three inches, see? Three inches, three inches makes the six. So we could do three. We could do half times three times eight. Get half times 24 or 12 inch squared or 12 square inches, okay? And the words length times width for the area of a rectangle means the same thing as base times height for the area of a rectangle. We're not talking about a parallelogram. I'm just saying if you wanted to look at these as two rectangles, the width and the length of this would be equivalent to the height and the base, okay, because we have 90 degree angles there. And look at this one. We have a square, and we know the definition of a square means all the sides are equal length, so all the sides would be four inches. If we have a triangle inside and we need to find the area of the triangle, well, if this side's four inches and this side's four inches, if they're all four inches, that means half of it would be two, wouldn't it? That means that height would be a two, two inches. So we have a base of four inches and a height of two inches. We could do that. We could find the area of this one triangle by doing half times four times two, which is half times eight, which would be four inches squared or four square inches. And the area of the entire square would be 16 because we'd do the four times four, wouldn't we, to get the whole thing. All right. Now, this is FYI for your information. It's extra info that's not in the Steck Vaughn GED book, but I thought I'd mention it to you because people who do take algebra and geometry in high school, the actual courses, would probably learn this. So this is like high school geometry. There's a thing called slant height, and you'll see it like a little script L, lowercase l. It means that length. It's not the same as height. Here, our, here we have our height with our 90 degree angle, see our box, but that's the slant height. And I have a demonstration of height versus slant height that's going to come up next in this GED playlist. And also, I have my grade 6 math 12.4b for an explanation of 2D versus 3D. This is 2D because we have length times width. This is 3D because we have length times width times height, see? This answer would have a little two exponent because it's squared, it's two measures. This answer would have a little three exponent as cubed, okay? And I talk about that a little bit. So you should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 275. And just remember that height is not the same thing as slant height. This height has a perpendicular line, see? And it's got a 90 degree angle, a right angle here. Slant height is laying on a slant, okay? 
Our next GED lesson is circles, and we're going to talk about circumference, diameter, radius, and how to use the formulas to find them. And I'll have links to those helpful grade 5 and grade 6 math videos in this playlist. In, I mean in this description, I'm sorry. All right? So I hope you're doing well. Remember, if you ever get confused, just watch the linked videos in the description and try to watch every video in the playlist because that's only going to help you pass the test, okay? All right. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.